Welcome everyone, today we'll have a new engraving guide for Lost Ark. As you can see behind me, I have just gotten my engravings to 4 to 3333. Three, three. So basically the four engravings are level 15. And don't worry guys, I didn't spend a lot of gold into it. So currently a lot of my gold invested into different materials that I've been planning to sell them. So I actually spent about 10,000 or less than 10,000 gold to have this setup. And what I want to do is I want to go through the notes of how to do this and how to make this possible with the cheapest method. We'll be looking into the ability storms, the cheap versus expensive engraving differentiation. So you want to understand which engravings are expensive, which ones are cheap, and how to combine those. Then I want to share with you guys the choice of which engravings to equip. Because you can equip two of those. And notice my two are only plus nine, and this still works. And then I want to talk to you guys about, you know, the necklace, the rings, and how to pick those, and other ch choices between the quality of the gears and also the debuffs with engravings. So I want to share a lot of insights I have discovered myself, and hopefully this can be helpful and help you guys to get your engravings to 3333, which is going to be four of the level three of the engravings to prepare you for Valton and also prepare you for more rate content. Now we'll also be looking into some of the method that I use to facet my ability stones and also some of my method to you know monitor the market and how to do this properly to get the cheapest discount. Because sometimes when you look at the market correctly and if you do this you know for a few minutes a day, you actually get a lot more discount instead of buying everything outright. So I want to share those market insights and also the tricks with you know with the facet of the stones and also different methods to give you guys the best ways to improve your engraving to all the maximum levels. So coming over to our notes, you can see that this method will be usable for both to get three of the maximum level engravings for the 333 or for my current setup for the 3333. So the four max level engravings with over here for 15. And basically what I wanted to share with you guys first is that it's no rush for the engravings, but we do want to start bidding and also start buying items now while they're quite cheap. And you, this might take a few days if you're looking for a bargain, but if you don't start looking and if you don't know what you're looking, you might not get such a discount. And maybe when the Velton patch comes up, the engravings might go up in price because players will be ready for the new rate and also the new difficulty of the content. Now the first thing we want to understand when setting up engravings is going to be the ability stone. So we're going to spend a little time on this one. And the first thing we want to understand is this can be very costly. Because if you come over to my videos, notice I've been trying my engravings and I've been trying my ability stones. And they sometimes I fail, sometimes I succeed. And just you know to share with you guys, I actually bought about seven to eight ability stones to try. And only on my last one did I get a good ability stone. So I have gotten a plus 12 and this is a plus 13 ability stone. So it is quite hard to get the ability stone to, you know, be on plus 12. And because of this, you want to understand how should you pick your ability stones. So the first option is going to be getting two of the expensive engravings. The benefit of this is that this would save your gold on buying accessories because you have less expensive engravings to buy for. But I don't recommend this because the stones themselves are very costly. For example, if I was going to get my, you know, Curse Doll and also Master Tenacity Ability Stone, this will cost anywhere from 500 to 1000 gold. But if I get Curse Doll with Heavy Armor, which I'll talk to you guys why Heavy Armor, this will only cost me about 50 to 20 gold. So it's like, you know, 10 or 20 times difference in gold. And I can buy a lot of those stones to facet into higher levels. Because if I spend, you know, 1000 gold on one of my Ability stones, if I fail, it feels terrible, right? So this way I can afford to fail multiple times. And this is what I did as I was testing my facet over here. Now very soon we'll talk about what is the difference between a cheap and also expensive engraving and how to find this out for your own class. I'll use my class for Berserker as an example, and hopefully this will guide you guys the best way to get the cheapest engravings. Now I do want to spend just a brief moment to talk about faceting the ability stones. So let's zoom in over here. I'll go to one of the successful facet over here and I want to show you guys the breakdown. So notice this facet, I actually got six and seven and I have been prioritizing on Curse Doll. I'll briefly run you guys on my understanding to this. So we break the facet into three categories, the mid part, the initial part, the mid part, and also the end part. So notice if we break this into three parts, each of the parts have about three abilities to click. 
And the first part is about 75 or 65, I'll go for my cursor, which will be my main ability. The second part, I'll go for 65, 55 on this part. And the final part, I'll go 55 or 45 percent on the final part. And this is what I try to do, of course. And sometimes I try to go for heavy armor. So let me show you guys how I do this. And of course, this takes many attempts. I'm not saying this will always you know, get it right, but this actually takes quite a bit of attempts. So notice I, at the start, I go for cursed door. When it's 65 and when it's 75. But when it's 45 or 35, I'll go for the reduced abilities over here. So when it's 35, I go down here. And I wasn't very lucky at the start, of course, as you can see. So 45, 55, I come back here. 65, come back here, 55. And basically, I'm trying to direct all the all the good probabilities of success into the main ability. And the second ability, the heavy armor, doesn't have to be as high. My goal is to get cursed or beyond 7 or beyond 6 if I can. And, you know, thankfully, at the final few clicks, this worked. But... As you can see, the focus will be focused on one ability for this method. My goal is to get my expensive main ability, it's cursed out over here, to as high as I can. And the secondary ability, I'm okay if heavy armor is on 5, but if it's on 6, it's even better. Now let's come over to the part we have a look at the expensive and also cheap engravings. Now some engravings are universal for most of the class for damage, including you know, Grudge, Cursed Doll, and also King Blunt Weapon. Those are quite expensive engravings for any of the class, and they're especially expensive when we have them combined with the main class engravings. For example, if I have my main class engraving with Mayhem plus Master Tenacity, which both plus three, this is quite expensive for this ring, which I'll talk about how I got this ring. So over here, what we try to do is, we try to break some of the engravings into the expensive category. Usually the main class engraving plus any expensive ones will be very costly. So we want to differentiate at least three of the expensive engravings and at least one of the cheaper engravings. So the key is to find the cheapest engravings out of the four you're trying to go for. On my case over here, I have been planning to get my cheapest engraving as Raid Captain because Berserkers have a lot of bonus movement speed and I also go for swiftness. And also I have been considering heavy armor for a while simply because the new content, there will be a lot of damage and you know I'm not familiar with the content. I My goal is to not do the highest damage but rather to save some revives and also try to survive. So in the end I decided to go with heavy armor instead of going for Raid Captain for bonus damage. Now, of course, I can go for Grudge, I can go for King Blunt Weapon for additional damage. But in that sense, for me personally, with about, you know, I usually have 200 pins. With that much ping, I want to survive first before doing more damage. And this is one of the reasons I pick Heavy Armor as my cheaper engravings for this combination. Now, let's say if you're planning to have all the expensive engravings, even within those ones, there will be one that is the cheapest. So once you find the one engraving that is the cheapest for you, let's come over for the choice of combination. So for the engravings, we can equip two of the engravings. After that, there's ability stone. And after that, we'll go for accessories. So this is usually a combination. I'm not going to encourage you guys to buy the legendary engravings because I don't think it is needed unless we want to push for, you know, best stats and also best values. So you can see my mayhem is plus nine and also my master tenacity is only plus nine over here. So those are only the purple books, which are very cheap on the marketplace. So what we do is, I want to I want to equip one of my class engraving plus one expensive engraving. And for me over here, I picked the Master Tenacity, which is one of the expensive ones for my class. After that, my Ability Storms, because I want a cheaper Ability Storm to try to faster many times, I go for one expensive, one cheap. The cheap ones I decide to pick will be Heavy Armor, the expensive one I picked will be Cursed Off. Notice now what I have is, I have plus 9 on my Mayhem, plus 9 on my Master Tenacity, and in then I have plus 6, at least plus 6 on the expensive ability, and then plus whatever cheap engravings I get out of it. And now I'll be combining those with two choices. So very soon I'll talk to you guys about picking accessories. So I'll be combining plus 3 plus the cheap engravings, or plus 3 plus 3. So let me, let me use this, this example to show you guys. So what I do is, let's remove some of my equipments. So let's remove those. So right now what you're going to see is, I have level, I have plus 9, plus 9, plus 7, and also plus 6. Now I was fortunate enough to find this ring. Notice that it has the critical I wanted, and also it has the plus 3, plus 3. 
Very soon we'll talk about the stats and also quality as well. So once I equip this ring, this is what I'm looking at. So you do need at least one expensive accessory like this to make this work because the rest of it, I will be combining the expensive engravings plus a cheap engraving. So I'll be going with three mayhem plus anything I find with heavy armor, and then three master tenacity with anything I find with heavy armor, and then cursed star with three, three, and two with anything I find with heavy armor. And that is what I did over here. You can see here I have mayhem plus three, heavy armor plus three, and over here I have heavy armor plus three, cursed star plus three, and then master tenacity and cursed star. And finally, we have heavy armor and also cursed all. So basically, the goal is to try to combine at least one cheap engraving with one expensive engraving. Now, there will be times that you will still want to have, you know, shortage of engravings. For example, over here, we have master tenacity plus three and cursed all plus two. So notice by maximizing the cheaper engravings to plus three plus three, I can afford to get a less plus engravings over here. So my cursed star doesn't have to be plus two over here. It uh, doesn't have to be plus three. It is only plus two over here. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to maximize the discount I get using the cheaper engravings to combine with the expensive one. And finally, when I need to get two expensive engravings together, I don't have to get the higher requirement because a plus two item is much more cheaper compared to a plus three plus three. Now, of course, we do want to get the stats right. It is very important to understand the stats for most of the class. And for my class, it is critical rate followed by swiftness. For other classes, there can also be specialization. So those are the three main stats for most of the class. And it's important for us to know which stats we want. And if we look at the stats, the necklace is by far the hardest. Because over here, what you're looking at is, for the necklace, you need critical swiftness, and pretty much for me. And then you need two of the good engravings. And what I do is, I tend to use one cheap engraving, which is heavy armor, plus one expensive engraving, because it is so much harder to find necklace with high quality, right stats, and also right engravings. I was fortunate enough to find this one, and those doesn't come cheap. And this is the most expensive item I bought with this whole setup. And I try to keep everything under 10,000 gold. Now, once we have gotten the necklace, we'll be looking into rings and also earrings. And over here, I do want to show you guys some of the things I start to look for as I combine those items. So notice this is a recording of me sorting out my items. Notice over here, I know I'm looking for plus three on my hand, plus three on master tenacity, and those could be combined with any value on the heavy armor, which is greater than two. So plus three mayhem, plus two on heavy armor, it's good. And I know I'm looking for at least one ring and also two earrings because I was fortunate enough to find this particular ring, which is very good for me, for my class. And this has the right stats to help me, you know, save some gold. And after that, I'm looking for two earrings and also one ring. The goal as you look for items on the marketplace is that sometimes you don't have to buy right away. So notice I'm here I'm checking my engravings and as I check them, I'll be looking into different categories of combination. I know Mayhem plus Cursed is going to be very expensive. So what we do is we keep searching for the cheapest combination between the expensive engravings and also the cheaper engravings. I'll show you guys what I mean very soon. I'll just show you guys some of my searches over here. So notice I noticed those are very expensive. And here I'll be searching for different combinations. And as we go with combinations, as we go further, you're gonna see that I'll be reducing some of the stats and increasing some other stats to make sure we calculate correctly. Now, just to give you guys a brief example of what I mean by calculating correctly, let's come over to this one. I'll move this over here. So. It is important to have a tracking table of the engravings we needed. So notice that after having this ring, I'll, I'll take those off to show you guys. So after having this ring, this is the table of what I needed. I know I need to combine most of my expensive ones with a cheaper engraving, and I also want to combine them correctly. So I start to look into rings and also earrings. So firstly, I try to get a necklace that is filling the stats, after that, I'll be going for one earring, and now I'm left with one ring and also one earring. So the goal of this particular setup is to make sure we fill the item that has more choices. And as I was searching for those items, they have two choices of buying those items. You can bid for those items and wait for a few hours or 10 hours, or you can buy those out. And because you have those choices and you're keeping a track of those you know, engravings, what I recommend is you can spend a few days to find the cheapest bargain, and this may be the best method. 
because once you start to look, you might find item that is better than what you have bidded, and always understand how much the market is willing to pay for those items. I'll give you guys a small example. As I was doing my whole engraving setup, I actually bid for this particular necklace. Notice it is heavy armor and also cursed star, which is what I wanted, with some really good quality, but only has two plus two heavy armor. And at the time I needed plus three, but I thought this is a bargain. This item was selling for 700 gold bidding. So I waited for about 10 hours for this item. And after buying this item, I was able to sell this one for 6,000 gold. So even though I didn't need this one, I still made some gold by doing this because I was spitting on the right item with the right combination. But just in case I bought it and no one was buying this, I was happy to use this item over my existing one. I can sell my existing one as well. And this also allows me to adjust a little bit on my other choices, because you can see I have some engravings which are plus two and some engravings which are plus three, and this can be adjusted. Now, as we look into buying accessories, there's two things we also want to consider as you buy accessories. Now, those are a little more optional because once we have enough engravings for the, you know, 3333 three, 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 for the four of the level three engravings, and also we have the correct main stats and also sub stats, we want to focus on the, on the necklace, which will give us the highest stats. And you do want the highest quality on this item. Usually you want to aim for over 70 or even 80 if you can, and you know, 79, you know, quality for this one is not bad for me. But as you can see, my other items, this one's only 26 quality, this one's 58, this one's 90, which is superb, this one's only 22 quality. So I'm not a big fuss about quality, because if I get the right necklace stats, I'm happy, because necklace provide the highest stats, over 400 stats. The earrings only 200 stats, and also the rings are only about 170 stats. So they're not the highest gain on stats. So it's okay for me to not overspend. I'll be happy if they're over 60 quality, but this is not a must. Now, I do think it is quite important as you look into the engravings, you also want to look at the debuffs you get from the engravings. Because notice over here, we have defense reduction for me, which is level nine. Because if I get one more of this, I'll be over the cap. So it's quite important to kind of balance those out. And as you can see, some of those knots will have a plus two debuff. And some of those will have a plus two, plus one over here. So as I was picking my items, I was actually not as focused on quality. I was a little more focused on the debuff of the knots of deductions. So this one have attack power power plus minus, you know, minus attack power plus one, which is good. You want to get the minus, lower minus ones. And this one have a defense reduction plus three, which is not as good. So the goal over here is while you're balancing the price of items, you want to first consider how many debuffs you're getting on yourself. I think it is okay for the one level one debuff. If you got a level two debuff, this also means you're having two of the level one debuff. So in that sense, if I get this to plus level 10, this will minus 10% of my defense. It is not the worst, but it is not as great. So I'm okay with level one at the moment. And this is gonna be additional brain work as you guys look into the debuffs. What I recommend is if you're looking into necklace, don't worry about too much about the debuffs, worry about the quality. Now, if you look at the earrings, consider some good quality, but you want to get lower debuffs. Notice I have a not plus one, not plus one. And if you have a really high quality, then it's okay to have a higher debuff. So this is kind of balancing. So this is a 90 quality ring with a defense reduction plus two. And finally, if you're looking for your last piece of item and there isn't much supply on the market, then it's okay to accept a lower quality and also a higher debuff. So this is more optional because those items they come in a variety of supplies, and you want to be on the lookout by understanding those methods. Now, before we finish, I'll give you guys a quick rundown on how much I spent on each of my items. So I spent about, I bought about seven to eight of Ability Storms, and in terms of gold, so I'm waiting, not talking about films, I spent about 100 films, and that comes back to about 5,000 gold. But because we have fans for free, so I'm okay not counting the gold I spent on fans because I didn't buy any fans with my gold. Those came from the game and also event. So the ability stones, I spent about 20 or 30 gold each for nine of those. So that's about 300 gold for ability stones. After that, the most expensive item will be this particular necklace. I believe it was a buyout of 7,000 gold, but I could have, I actually think I bid it as well. So the bid maybe was 7,000, 6,000 gold. So this necklace, let's say this is a 7,000 gold necklace. 
and this is the most expensive thing on my whole piece. So this is 7,000 gold plus 300 gold, 7,300 gold. Now each of my earrings and also my rings are only less than 1,500 gold. I believe some of those 800, some of those are a little higher, some of those are 1,000. They don't go over 1,500 gold. And finally, I was fortunate enough to get this ring from my own you know, raid, from my Agros raid. So because of this, I was a little more fortunate to only spend about 10,000 gold for this entire setup. And I do think I will be ready for the vaulting patch using this setup because I'm focusing more of a defensive capacity in terms of doing the most damage with Scratch and also King Blunt Weapon. I'm going with heavy armor and also some defensive capacity. Now, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. I know I'm trying to figure out things out myself and I think, you know, some pro play Korean players or other players might have a better setup, but I do want to share all the thought work and also the, my way of getting the cheapest engravings for you guys. And hopefully, you know, if you have any tips or insights, just leave a comment of how to do your engravings properly to do the cheapest way. And what are your recommendations? Would you go for most of the damage or would you go for something defensive like heavy armor? Because I do believe the global service, the heavy armor price is actually pretty high because we have more focus on surviving the raid compared to doing more damage in the raid. Now, if you guys haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, make sure you do so because we'll be getting a lot of guides, a lot of tips as I discover them and I love the game. So I want to share as much as I can with you guys and let's have a great time in Lost Ark as we explore this game and get the most out of it.